Okay. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's webinar. Uh, my name is Ralph Spears. I'm from the Janusburg Stock Exchange. Tonight we have Sean van den Berg, who's going to be talking about what is technical analysis, and he's going to take us through a half an hour presentation. Um, and yeah, if you need any, to ask any questions along the way, you're welcome to just type it in um, at the top right hand corner. You can click on chat and type it in and we will try and answer afterwards at the end. Yeah, it might say chat or questions depending on what it says in the top right hand corner there. But you're welcome to, to ask those questions. We'll only be able to answer them right at the end. Um, yeah, so I'm going to hand over to Sean. Thank you very much, Sean, for coming in today at the JSC. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for having us. Good evening, everybody. Um, let's cut the... Okay, that's all. That's on off now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, well, good evening, everybody. Um, as Rob said, I'm from PSG Online. I head up client education. Welcome to one of my favorite subjects, uh, technical analysis. I, I am the technical analyst at PSG Online. I uh, do a lot of uh, analysis on the charge for the research department. But here's the agenda for today. Um, just three things, or three, three main things. Just a quick introduction. What is uh, uh, technical analysis? And just to discuss some of the tools, obviously it's a very, very broad um, uh, area of, 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 of approach to the market. So we are going to highlight some of the tools that I use. Um, and then also just to touch on some in technical indicators, because I understand there are thousands of technical indicators out there. But my objective today is just to highlight a process for you guys. And those who have never ever traded technical analysis, maybe introduce you to the, to the art form. Uh, there's no... Uh, right or wrong answers, it's just uh, understanding how to use the art and obviously the, the, the interpretation is what's important. Okay, so just quickly before we get going, I just want to ask a quick question. Um, okay, how many of you uh, are traders and use technical analysis full time? If you can just answer that question quickly, I really appreciate it. Okay. Okay, oh. Like, like most of you haven't uh, used technical analysis or not trading. Okay, great. Well, this, this is the opportunity for you guys to learn more about it. Okay. Okay. Looks like, yeah. So most of you have never used technical analysis before. It looks like it. Well, great. Thanks for your participation. Okay. So hopefully you all get some benefit from this presentation today. So let's get into it quickly. Um, what is technical analysis? Bottom line, when it comes to share market analysis, you need to answer three questions. You need to know what must I buy, when must I buy, and when must I sell. And I always joke, I say, if you can answer those three questions, would you make money in the stock market? And the answer is yes. Because obviously we just cloud it a bit more by giving it names like fundamental analysis and technical analysis. These are the two approaches to the market. So fundamental analysis also a question, what must I buy? And you can break it down further into what we call macro fundamentals, looking at the big picture, what I call economics uh, 101, uh, things like inflation and interest rates and things like that. And we're talking about micro fundamentals. This is more specific to the company, the financial statements, financial ratios, and things like that. So that answers the, ask the question, or answers the question, uh, what must I buy? And in tonight's presentation, obviously, we're concentrating on technical analysis. And that asks the question, when must I buy and when must I sell? So the critical success factor here is timing. Okay. With fundamental analysis, there are a lot of factors involved. With technical analysis, there's only two things we're looking at, price and volume. Okay. And obviously, there are a lot of principles and assumptions behind uh, technical analysis. I'm going to just give it very, very briefly. What is technical analysis? It's anything we know or feel or think about a company. And that's all reflected in what we call the fundamentals. So yes, uh, technical analysts might take it in consideration. So it's, a, a, it's a rational and irrational opinions and things like that. Uh, and that's all discounted, number one, into the share price. Yeah? And number two, the number of, number of shares traded, what they call volume. So that's where, they, where, where we look at those two factors. Now price and volume uh, is determined by supply and demand. Okay? 
So we're optimistic about a future a company's future prospects. We're going to buy into the company and obviously create demand, and that's going to push the share price up. We think there's no prospects. We'll be selling off the share, and obviously the share price will drop. But that supply and demand will create what they call trends. Now, one of your goals as a technical analyst is to establish or, or, or determine what are those trends. And then from there, we're going to start looking for patterns. And uh, patterns, as I say, uh, trends are, are, are repeated. History repeats itself. When it comes to the stock market, you understand there's human psychology involved in the market, and that's what moves the market. So bottom line, I always say to people, is market sentiment, how people feel about certain things, be it the market, be it about a company, whatever the case might be. And that brings me to the next slide. We talk about market psychology. You must understand there's two big factors that move the market, greed and fear. Those are the two big emotions in the market. So you get three different phases in an in in uptrend and three different phases in a downtrend. So let's take an example at the bottom of the, of the cycle. Stage one. This is where people are starting, a small group of people start anticipating things are getting better. Okay, if the economy is bottoming out or the, uh, or the, the market is looking better. And more and more people, well, a small group of people get involved in the market. Then we get to the second stage where more and more people acknowledge that improvement is actually underway. Okay, and in the third stage, this is where I always joke, this is where the hairdresser gets involved in the market. And this is where they always say, when the hairdresser gets involved, it's time to get out. This is where the, people, the, the sentiment is, buy a share today, buy a Porsche tomorrow. Okay, and Alan Greenspan, the ex-reserve uh, uh, bank governor in the States, uh, he coined the phrase, irrational exuberance. This is where the market's going crazy. This is where we, you know, we, we, we have the excessive greed. Okay, but at the top of the market, obviously, uh, you also get a small group of people start seeing that uh, things can't stay like this forever, things can't be rosy like this forever, and they start taking their profits, and the share price starts coming off, or the market starts coming off. And you also have things like stop losses, and that being triggered, and obviously the market falls a bit further. That's where we get into the second stage in the, in the downtrend, where things are really deter deteriorating now, and more and more people coming to the market, and they're selling. And the third stage, right at the bottom, this is when you put a hairdresser that can't, can't handle the pain anymore, and she says, well, things are really going to get bad, and she sells. And the question always is, is that the right time to be selling? No. Okay, that's the right time to be buying. When everyone else is selling, you want to be buying, and when everyone else is buying, you want to be selling. So that brings up what, uh, what, what um, Warren Buffett once said. Be fearful when everyone else is greedy, and be greedy when everyone else is fearful. Okay. But the point of the slide is just understand it's market sentiment. Greed and fear that moves the market up and down. Okay, so technical analysis, in a, in a sense, is looking at market psychology. Every single point on the graph is a buy and a seller, and I always joke, one of them is wrong. Hopefully it's not you. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritties. What is technical analysis? And uh, this is just some of the background information that you, you know, uh, I believe are what I call tools, and this is your foundation when it looks at technical analysis. So when we talk about this, we talk about you first need to establish what kind of market are we in. Are we in a trending market or are we in a trading market? So those are the two kinds of markets we get. Trending, either the market's trending up or the market's trending down. Those are the markets you want to trade. When the market's moving sideways, that's what we call a trading or a range-bound market. And uh, I prefer not to trade those kind of markets. because uh, We'll talk about it again just now. That's where a market is going through a consolidation phase, a little bit of wait-and-see attitude. Okay. So those are the first things you need to ask yourself. What kind of market are we in? In a trending market or a trading market? And also what's important to establish where, what cycle are we in? There's three cycles. You get what they call a primary cycle. And you've heard of the phrase before, a bull, a, a bull cycle or a, bull, uh, or a bear uh, cycle. Okay, that's your long, term. In, in, in a bull market, we talk about a primary bull. That's your long-term cycle. Lasts from a few months to a few years. Okay. And a bear market, obviously, also from a few months to a few years. But it takes longer to build, okay, and it takes a shorter period to break down. So we need a bear market to bring prices back to more realistic levels, okay, especially in an environment now where our market is fairly priced, some shares are, are fully priced. We need a, a, a pullback, a bit of a bear market to bring prices back to more realistic levels. So that's the first cycle, primary, your primary bull, primary bear. Within a primary bull, we have what they call a secondary market, and that's what we call corrections. So in a... In, a, in that long-term upcycle, so there's little pullbacks in that long-term upcycle. That's what you call corrections. So when you read in the newspaper, the market's corrected, you know the long-term trend is up, but short-term the market's pulling back. Okay, that, was, that can also be a lot of profit-taking, etc. 
In a bear market, you also get a secondary trend, and that's called a rally. Those are little, those little up movements within a long-term downtrend. Those are called rallies. Again, when you're reading the newspaper or you have TV, the market has rallied. You now the long-term trend is down, or the primary trend is down. Secondary trend, the market is rallied short-term. That lasts from a few weeks to a few months, so the cycle is much shorter. And in the third cycle you get is what they call daily fluctuations or the minor trend. Today's close compared to yesterday, or today's close compared to last week Monday. Okay, and a lot of a lot of uh, uh, novice traders fall into a trap of looking at today's close and comparing to to last week or to, to, to Friday, for example. Okay, your main goal, even as a short-term day trader, is still to establish are we in a bull market or bear market? What is the primary trend? And then from there, chunk down to what they call the the, the corrections or rallies. And that gives you a much better perspective which way the market's going. Because most people are always on the wrong side of the market when, they, when they're trading. Okay. So we get a, 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 a bull market. The definition of a bull market, higher highs, higher lows. In a bear market, lower lows and lower highs. Okay. So you understand the support, uh, that the demand is exceeding supply in a bull market. In a bear market, uh, there's more sellers and buyers or a, a supply is overcoming demand. In a sideways market, that's where we talk about the market being range bound. It moves between two very narrow levels. Uh, this is where the buyers and sellers are having a bit of a tug of war. The bulls and bears. We're waiting for new information. And uh, either, either, either the information is positive or bullish, the market's going to go up. If it's, it's bearish, we break out of that trend and we can break downwards. Okay. So let's think of a sideways market as a bit of a, a tug of war going on. And that's what we call a consolidation phase. When you read the newspaper, in the newspaper, the market's consolidating, the market's taking a breather. So the market's taking a breather, and from there, we're either going to move up or move down. And that's when we talk about breakout strategies and breakout trading, when you use chart patterns. We'll talk about it a bit, a bit later. Okay, that's where it's effective as, as an entry and exit level, using a sideways market. Okay, so those are the two things you need to understand first. From there, we move on to what they call uh, support and resistance. I'm going to teach you some terminology. We don't talk about peaks and troughs, we talk about support to resistance. As I mentioned just now, every single point on this graph is a buy and a seller. When the price moves up to a certain level, we hit a ceiling. So that you can call it your resistance. Okay, there's more sellers at that, at that level. So obviously there's more sellers than buyers and the price will drop. Then you get to a certain level where there's more buyers come in and we, and we stop the, the bleeding as such. And uh, that's where we meet a, a floor or more buyers. The minute we go up, we move up above the previous resistance level. That's confirmation that the trade is still up. And so it goes on. We hit another area of resistance. Let me just bring my little cursor here quickly. Uh, we meet area of another area of resistance. It pulls back. And the minute we go above it again, that's where we have confirmation. But what's important to understand is in the upward trend, when the market pulls back, you can also use the previous highs or, or the resistance levels as a possible uh, support level. And I, I call that turning points, possible turning points. So I can anticipate where will the market pull back. And it depends also on the maturity of the trend. Sometimes it pulls back a third, sometimes 50%, and sometimes pulls back 60%, okay, or 66%. Those are the three different levels. The average is about 50% retracement of the previous up movement. But the point is I'm trying to make is that you can anticipate where will the market pull back and where will the market turn. Okay. So that's in the bull market. In the bear market, where the market's falling, the previous support will be a resistance level. Okay, so how far will the market rally? I can look at the previous support level. It doesn't have to work all the time, but it gives you a good indication how far will the market rally. Okay. Let's move out. Let's bring back my cursor again. Okay. Another very important tool to use with, with uh, uh, technical analysis is a very simple tool called trend lines. The idea is you find a prominent low or support point, a uh, support level. And ideally, be a, 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 a significant support or a, a, a big support level. Okay, and the ideal situation is extrapolated to, is to a second point and a third point. That's ideal, and then extrapolate it out. The more times it touches, the more reliable the trend line is. The longer it takes, also the more reliable the trend line is. And as the word would imply, as long as the share price remains above that support trend line, above those lows, the trend is up. Okay, so that gives you an indication that the trend is up, but also if the share price comes back and it breaks out and closes below that support trend line, we talk about triggering a change in trend. And that also helps you to either uh, get out, take profits, or it can also be a stop loss level and things like that. So use your support and resistance trend lines as entry and exit points. So in a, in a, in a bull market, you connect the lows together, that's where we call support trend line. 
In the bear market, we connect the highs or resistance levels. As long as the share price stays below that resistance trend line, the trend is down. So if you want to get into the market, you want to be in a situation, you want a confirmation change in trend, you want to see, see the share price break out and close above that trend line for you to confirm that the trend is changing. Okay. And when it comes to a sideways market, it's very important that you put that support and resistance trend lines in. That helps you establish when the price will break out. Some people like to trade to trade at range bound trades. Um, I like to look at it as, as, as a putting myself in the starting blocks and I wait for the breakout. And usually the breakout to be very strong, and that's what I act on. That's a, that's a trading strategy, and I know we will be talking about a trading strategy next week, Tuesday night. Okay, but trend lines, very basic trend, a uh, very basic um, uh, tool to use, but very, very effective. So remember, trend lines are diagonal, and support and resistance levels are horizontal. So usually we find that the, the, the levels are usually around around number there to ten rand, whatever the case might be. So you'll find there's a lot of buyers and sellers at those levels. Okay, so ideally you want to put a stop loss either above or below it, depends if you're long or short. Okay, so that's one of the very simple uh, tools to use. And in building on that, we talk about chart patterns. And these two groups of chart patterns you can use. And again, from a trading point of view, you're going to use chart patterns to help you anticipate where will the market be going. Okay, so the first group we're looking at is what we call uh, reversal chart patterns. As a word would imply, it, the trend is reversing. So some of the most popular ones you'll find quite often, the double tops, double bottoms. I always think of double tops as McDonald's arches. And it uh, looks like a big giant M. The minute it breaks below that support trend line, that's a trigger that the trend is reversing down. So that way you'll go short or you'll sell. Okay. So double top, trend reversal down. Double bottom, trend reversal up. So the minute we break above that previous resistance level, that would be your buy signal as we all go along. Okay. Or you'll buy. So I always think of the double tops as, as, as uh, McDonald's, and I always think of double, the, the W as, as the Wimpy. Okay. Um, you also obviously get triple tops, triple bottoms, which are more powerful. Um, obviously, it's, you find a more powerful support and resistance level. But the, some of the most common or the most important ones to use from a, uh, a technical trading point of view is what they call a head and shoulders formation. As what it implies, there's your left shoulder, there's your head, there's your right shoulder, and you connect the two support levels together. That's what they call the neckline. Uh, what's important, you only act on the breakout of that support trend line. And uh, what's useful about the head and shoulders formation, you can start using what they call price projection. I measure from the high to that neckline and that same distance I project from a breakout. And uh, this will help you anticipate a target price, a take profit or target price. Uh, you've got about 80% probability uh, of, of being right. I always think that's a good odds. So if I got a, a sell signal here at, at 10 Rand and I know it's going to 8 Rand, I've got a chance of making 2 Rand. 80% of the probability of doing that, I'll go short. Okay. So that's at the top of the market, trend reversal down, bottom of the market, what they call inverse head and shoulders, exactly the same principle, break out above resistance, and uh, that's where the markets go. You also get what they call uh, rising wedges and falling wedges. These things, if you're not watching it, you see the two converging trend lines. Uh, if you're not watching it, the breakout is very sharp and, very sh uh, and, and, and uh, obviously very, uh, very powerful. If you're not watching the market, you can be using a lot of money very short. Uh, a very short period of time or you miss opportunity to, to go short. In a falling wedge formation, remember it goes against the trend. So breaks out, breaks out very sharply. So you see, you start seeing this happening, you want to go short or go long on that breakout. And this doesn't happen too often. This is where your emotions have gone crazy. A market sentiment, you've got two uh, widening trend lines, it's like a megaphone. Emotions have gone excessively bullish, excessively bearish, excessively bullish, excessively bearish, excessively bullish and very bearish. Okay. So you start seeing that thing happening. Uh, either you trade it or you stay out. By the way, of all these chart patterns, it's very important that you bring that volume. Volume acts as a, as a confirmation tool. You want to see increased volumes on the breakouts. Okay, that's confirmation of, of the price action. Yeah. So that's just the reversal chart patterns, very important tool to use. I use it a lot for trading. Uh, but my favorite group is what they call continuation patterns. Um, we saw just now in the sideways market, a rectangle can move both ways. So this can be a reversal pattern or a continuation pattern. So if it moves from the bottom, moves sideways, and then breaks down, all it is is a complex triple top. If it moves from the, from the bottom, moves sideways, and then breaks up, that's a continuation pattern. So a sideways market, remember, it's a consolidation. But the continuation patterns, as the word implies, uh, and some of the most important patterns you'll pick up is what they call triangles. Uh, he has a flat top, flat bottom. You usually find that this is a great pattern when you start seeing new highs, new lows. Um, this is new highs, 52-week highs. Usually, the, this is a pattern happening. 
the market is hitting a resistance level, and then we break out above it. And usually this is blue sky potential because there's no sellers here. Okay. So you start seeing this pattern happening with new highs uh, or 52-week highs. It's a great, uh, a great pattern to trade. Obviously, in the 40 market, uh, a very important support level. Eventually, the support levels is uh, overtaken. As more sellers come to the market, and new lows carry on making new lows. So this is the ideal situation you want to go short. But this is a pattern I like to trade a lot. It's what I call a, a triangle. In this situation, a symmetrical triangle. It must touch, it touch at least five times before breaking out. You can see two converging trend lines. And ideally, you also can measure that as a, as, a, as a target price. The shorter version of this is what they call flags and pennants. The same uh, uh, principle applies. We're moving from, uh, we move uh, into a sideways trend and then break up, but continue on our original path before we went into the pattern. Okay. Again, with all these patterns, remember, volume is very important, confirmation uh, to use. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, chart price charts. Now, we've been talking about all these different ways of displaying this information. The simplest way to display this information is what we call a line chart. This is Anglo's. I'm connecting the closing price every day. And there we go. You can see what the Anglo's been happening. You've got two scales. You've got your Y. Okay, that's your price in cents. And in your X scale, your horizontal scale, that's the, the time. So I'll show you roughly about two and a half years. Um, and uh, this is until Friday's information. So that's what they call a line chart. Go one step further. You get what they call a bar chart. Same graph now. I've just zoomed into about, about two years. That gives you much more information. You'll get the high for the day, the low for the day, the tick to the, to the left where the market opened, the tick to the right where the market closed. And obviously the fourth bit of information that comes out of the JC every day is the number of shares traded, which is volume. So usually displayed at the bottom of the screen in the form of a histogram. Okay. So this is what a lot of novice traders will be using, bar charts and line charts. I use them myself. I switch between the two of them. As you get more involved in the market, you start using things called Japanese candlesticks. Where the bar chart looks at the relationship between the high, the close relative to the high low uh, range, a candlestick now starts looking at the relationship between the opening price and the closing price. If the opening price was lower than the uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, if the closing price was lower than the opening price, it would be a, a what they call a folding uh, candlestick, would be black, or in this situation, mine would be red. Uh, if the closing price is higher than the opening price, it would be a bullish day, and it would be a blue day. Okay, so. Much more information, and obviously from that you can also pick up a lot of uh, uh, interday chart patterns. They've got nice little names like dojis and, and, and shooting stars and spinning tops and things like that. Similar to the um, uh, bar charts in the sense that you'll also have little gaps, uh, Japanese candlesticks we call uh, uh, gaps windows. With, with bar charts you get things what they call uh, breakaway gaps and exhaustion gaps and islands and key reversal days. These are all tools uh, that you'll anticipate what's going to happen the next day. Okay, so that's how you display price information. And those are the four or three most important ones that most of us will be using. Okay, and from there, we start overlaying it with things like moving averages. So moving averages, and what I use in this situation, I'm using a simple 50-day moving average and a 200-day. You can use whatever periods you want to use. I suggest use two moving averages. The idea is the crossovers is what's important. If you just had one single moving average, the disadvantage is that in a sideways market, you'll get what they call whipsaws or false false uh, signals. So what I like to use is a 50-day and a 200-day. In this situation, my red line, which is the 50-day, it tags the share price closest. Obviously, the shorter the period, the closer to the graph. The longer the period, the furthest could be away from it. Now, the idea is when the 50-day crosses below my uh, my 200-day, uh, that's what we call the, the, the golden cross, okay, or the death cross, rather. So that gives me confirmation we're going from an uptrend to a downtrend. As long as the share price stays below those two moving averages, we're having a downtrend or a bear market. Okay, you can see roughly about, about four or five months. And as the share price was down. Then we had a bit of a rally, okay? And when the share price 50 day crossed above the 200 day moving average again, that's where you're, where you're given what they call a golden cross. Anything above that will be, will be uh, good news. But you can also see that this didn't last very long. Just after that, we had another. Death cross again, and three months later, we had the buy signal again, the bullish signal. I use this to determine of shall I be long or shall I be short. That's from a, from a trading uh, uh, equity point, uh, derivative point of view. Okay. So the point I'm trying to make also, don't ever use technical analysis, one technical indicator by itself. You want to use various other technical indicators to confirm. So you might want to bring in moving averages, I'm mean, sorry, your, your trend lines and things like that. I like to use other technical oscillators. That brings on what we call... Uh, let me just bring it in here quickly. 
Okay, this is what they call MACD. Now, there are hundreds of different technical oscillators and technical indicators. Some work well in the trending market, some work well in the trading market. I like the MACD, which stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. There's two moving averages. If you look at the, uh, bring my little cursor back in here again, uh, my pen, my spotlight, there we go. It's the difference between a 25-day and a 12-day and a, and a, and a moving average. The difference between the two of them, so I subtract the 12-day from the 25-day, it creates a third moving average, and I put a fourth moving average on top of it. That's a 9-day trigger. Okay. So the interpretation, and, is, and this is what, the reason why I like to use this indicator, because it works well in both markets. It works well in the trending market, and it works well in the trading market. But also it's very versatile. You can use it various ways. First of all, it highlights... For example, seriously overbought and oversold levels. And the right top here, that's very, very overbought. It hasn't been overbought for a long time. And this level here, it was very, very oversold. Okay. Remember, when the share price goes up, there's more buyers and sellers. So that's why we talk about overbought. When the share price falls, we talk about oversold, more sellers and buyers. Okay. So the best time to buy is obviously as close to the bottom of the cycle as possible. The best time to sell is at the top of the cycle. Okay. So there's various ways of using MACD. You can use a crossover when it crosses up through zero, going from overbought, oversold territory into overbought territory. And when it comes down through it again, that will you'd sell. Okay, it's a bit more conservative. You see, don't get so many buy and sell signals. Alternatively, you can use a crossover when the MACD crosses its trigger line, that little dotted line. That's where you'd buy, and that's where you'd sell. Okay, so there's various ways of using it. I like to use the crossover the zero line, a bit more conservative. I'm going for the bigger move okay well even say this could have been a bit earlier i'm not worried about it i might miss the first 10 percent and i must miss the, the, the top 10 percent yeah i want to take advantage of the 80 percent in between that's what, it, what this does for me but even more powerful going back to my previous slide when i say in a sideways market that was uh, september october uh, last year remember the sideways market okay that's what we were talking about this is where this indicator is also powerful it highlights what they call divergence in this situation is what you call bearish divergence the share price is making your highs but the indicator is doing the opposite. It's failing to confirm. It's telling you, watch out, the should be changing direction. And lo and behold, that's what happened here. Okay, that's what they call bearish divergence. It's warning you. So remember, moving averages are what they call lagging indicators. Uh, MACD acts as an early warning or a leading indicator. Here's another example. Share price making new highs. Indicators failing to confirm that. What happened? We had another fall. Okay, so this is how you can start anticipating what's going to happen in the market. So that was a bearish diversion. Here's an example of a bullish diversion. Yes, slightly uh, sideways market, but you can see what happens with the indicator. The indicator is doing the opposite. We're making slightly higher lows. Watch out, we'll be changing direction soon. So we're in from a sideways market, and lo and behold, we have this little rally. Okay, that's why I like MACD. And we should understand there are a lot of other indicators. I use RSI, stochastic. Um, ah, there are hundreds out there. Okay, so the idea is what's important is inter understand the interpretation. What does this indicator do? I like MCD because it works well in both markets and it's got a lot more uses. Okay, so guys, that helps you to determine uh, what we call price. Then also very important, always confirm by looking at volume. Now volume confirms price action and volume leads price action. Now just do a little example here. Ignore the top graphs here and just look at the histogram at the bottom here. And by looking at this little circle here, if I just look at the graph, at the, at the histogram, can you tell me are there more buyers than sellers? You don't know. That's why you combine volume with the price. And I can see price is going up, so I must assume there must be more buyers and sellers. Now, in, here in South Africa, 90% of the trade on the JSC are the institutions, the pension funds, unit trust guys, etc. You and I, small private investors, have one major advantage over them. We get flexibility. I like to take on the coattails of the, of the institution, but I get flexibility. I can move in and out faster than they can. So when I'm looking at volume, I'm looking at, and this indicator is called on balance volume. It's a running total of volume. If, the, if price goes up, I add the volume. If price falls, I subtract the volume. What's very important here is I use a 10-day a, um, a moving average, and I want to see a crossover. I want to see a crossover of the moving averages. I mean, yeah, that would have been confirmation. We're going from a, but this is what they call volume distribution. So it's confirming that price action. There's sellers coming to the market. And then obviously... More, more clever money is coming to the bottom here. Remember I spoke to you just now about the clever money? Okay, so this is the clever money coming in the bottom here. And then we have this volume accumulation. And that's what's run here. So volume is a very important confirmation tool. Okay, and that's how you'd use it. So obviously when it's going up, okay, that's volume accumulation. And we have a bit of a sideways market. There hasn't been, there hasn't been much of a sell-off. And that's what you can see what's happening with the market here. The Anglo is a bit of a sideways market. Slightly higher highs, but you get a bit of a sideways market. 
Um, so that's looking at volume. And the last thing I always like to do is I've been with what they call rate of strength analysis. Rate of strength analysis especially helps in the situation when you've got two different uh, uh, shares and you want to have one in your, in your trading portfolio or one in your investment portfolio. I'm looking at a bank, I'm looking at F&B or first rand relative to, um, to a standard bank. I want to choose which one which one's stronger. So I read the strength analysis, now I'm using Angler again, as all it is, it's an indicator that compares one data stream to another data stream. So yeah, I'm looking at Anglo's relative to the whole market, to the JC All Share. And I use an analogy of a horse race. If you had an opportunity to bet on a horse race, halfway through horse race, which horses would you like to bet on? Obviously you want to go for the horses near the front of the race, the potential winners. Some of you might bet on the horses near the middle. But you should not be betting on the donkey at the end of the race because obviously he's got the longest to ride. Okay, so this is the interpretation of this indicator is uh, when it's falling down, when it's coming back like this, obviously Angler at that point in time relative to the whole market was the donkey. Okay, it was underperforming the market. There were better opportunities somewhere else. When it starts to trend up like that, this point in time, it was outperforming. So this is one of the, the, one of the shares, one of the horses near the front of the race. Okay, when it moves sideways, you're betting on the horses near the middle. Okay, so at this point in time, you can see it's just below its moving averages, that high is lower than this one, so we're slowly getting weaker, so again, you can see the market moving sideways. Might be saying, hey, there's an opportunity somewhere else. We've had a little run, uh, maybe start time to start, start taking profits. Yes, it's still about its moving averages, the trend is still bullish, um, you know, so you, you might say, okay, let me take my profits. I'm roughly down here, uh, 226, now 273, I made roughly about 50 rand a share, maybe I'll take my profits. As a trader. Okay, remember technical analysis is more appropriate for trading, not for investing. You might only use investing uh, from looking at uh, long-term uh, cycles, you might look at your, your, your moving averages to help you establish your in a bull market or bear market. But technical analysis is ideal for trading. Okay, so guys, I'm running out of time. Uh, this is the end of the presentation in the sense that uh, um, I hope you benefit from it. In, in a nutshell, I always believe in there's three things you want to look at. Ask yourself oh, what kind of market are we in? Ideally, you want to be trading a trending market. Either the market's going up or the market's going down. Obviously, you can only take advantage of, of a falling market using derivatives like single stock futures. Okay, you'll go short. Within that long-term trending market, either up or down, you want to look for uh, take advantage of the cycles. Are we at the top of the cycle? Are we overbought? Are we sold? And then lastly, you want to go for shares that are outperforming the market. So you want to go long, you want to go for the strong shares. You want to go short, you want to go for the underperforming shares. So in a nutshell, when I look at trending, I use various tools, cycles, support and resistance, trend lines, moving averages. When I look at overbought, oversold, and I've only been quickly touched on it tonight, MACD, but there's RSI, stochastic, and a lot of other indicators you can use. But I suggest that you also use volume. Volume confirms that price action is a very important sensitive indicator in, in, in the sense that it leads price action. And then lastly, I like to use relative strength analysis. Okay, guys. So, before we handle any questions, let me quickly summarize it. Technical analysis, remember, is not concerned with the reasons behind the price move. A pure technical analyst doesn't want to know the name of the company. You also understand that there's always a reason why the share price is moving up and down. So, this can be trivial or something more drastic. Okay, we've seen now the last few days what's happening with African Bank. But uh, as a, a trader, some of you might not agree with it, but I always believe in finding out why. Why is the sentiment forcing the share price down? Okay, I might have missed something. So I always like to find out why, and then obviously the market also overreacts to the top side and the bottom side. And sometimes it might not be justified, and that's where the opportunity lies. Okay, so use common sense and feel where the price is right, and that's why I believe using support and resistance and looking at the market. Okay, let the technical charts tell you where to get in at the market. So yes, we're talking about greed and fear, those are the two biggest emotions. You need to be objective. Okay, so one, one point I was trying to make for you guys is being aware and find out why and it will lead you to that buying opportunity. Okay, so the markets are volatile and sometimes the market behaves like a pendulum. One day we're up, one day we're down. Okay, but sometimes we have excessive moves. We swing too far left and too far right. Okay, so be aware of those kind of market actions. And that's what technical analysis, you need to have this, um, call it a, 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 a quiver of arrows. You need to have a lot of tools in your toolbox. Okay, so technical analysis and, and the charts I've been using as our own little software called WEN and, and, and there's a lot of other tools available out there. They are there to help you identify these events and obviously from there you still need to do your homework. Okay, don't just go blindly on the, on the, on the what's happening with the charts. 
Okay. And always, always, always risk, use risk management. I spoke about stop loss. So as a trader, always use risk management, especially when it comes to the stop loss facility. Okay. So guys, uh, this presentation will be sent out to you. Or if you were participated, I'll be seeing the PDF as well as the recording. And um, obviously, this whole presentation is based on our on the PSG online online tutorials. So you can go read up more about it in the tutorials eight and nine. And um, obviously, we've got a lot of other webinars coming up. Uh, but thanks for your time. Thanks for your support. Uh, let me see if there's any questions coming through. Okay, we'll go through some questions. Okay, so let's go through this over here. Okay. Okay, Regan, uh, you're asking a question about PE ratio. Yes, uh, obviously the presentation tonight is mainly focused on, on technical analysis, but uh, PE ratio is one of the things you look at from a value point of view. And uh, I think about two weeks ago, I did speak about PE ratios and things like that. We go one step further. I like to use what they call a peg ratio and also price NAV. But yes, that also helps you to identify what share to buy. But that's fundamental analysis. Yeah, I'll just also... Um uh, add that uh, we had a webinar last week on fundamental analysis with PE ratios and you can go and actually look on the JSC's uh, YouTube page and you'll find under JSC uh, web team uh, actual recording from that last week's webinar. Okay, Leon, you're asking a question here, what time frame are we looking at here? Uh, are we using day charts, daily charts? But uh, technical analysis applies to any any time frame. You can use the day charts, minute by minute charts, weekly charts. Doesn't matter. So it depends what kind of style you're using. Are you a day trader, a swing trader, or position trader? So I hope that answers your question, Leon. Um, no comment, Christo. I don't know about that. Uh, it's getting stuck. Doesn't look like anyone else had the same problem. Uh, yeah, technical analysis. Uh, thanks, Ludovic. Uh, good question. Uh, does technical analysis work with mutual funds and ETFs? Yes, you can still apply the same things, but obviously with mutual funds, remember, you're not going to be trading mutual funds because the costs are much higher. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned just now, as an investor, you might want to establish or in a bull market or bear market with that particular fund, or you might use rate to strength analysis, compare uh, one fund to another fund. Um, I use it for ETFs, yes, very important to use that. But thanks for your question, Rebecca. Uh, another one from you. Uh, yeah, same question with, with the trend. How applicable is technical analysis to forex trading? Eugene, same, same applies to anything, gold, anything. Any securities, technical analysis works. Um, Benita, uh, is there more detailed training sessions? Uh, what more technical analysis you want? Uh, I do have on our website various other uh, webinars I've done in the past. But Venita, drop me an email tomorrow. Uh, tell me what you want to look at and maybe we can do, we'll take it from there. Um, okay, you're doing your RPE, uh, interpreting the graphs. Uh, yeah, again, I'll, re I'll refer you to maybe look at the WEN software. Uh, the WEN software, the help facility, just on technical analysis, is very, very powerful. I spent about a year writing it out, facilitating goes more into, into the inter interpretation. But also, Benita, you know, I always believe that Google's your friend. And one of my favorite websites is a, a website called investopedia.com. And uh, there you can answer your lot of your questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of charting software out there, Benita. We've got our own software, um, our web software. It is an old program. It's been around for more than 20 years. The software is for free. Um, it's an entry-level program. Um, obviously, we charge for the download. It's 169 rand a month, uh, but the software is for free. The other programs out there, I use Metastock. Metastock's from from Reuters, but you're paying 5,000 rand for it. There's a lot of other software out there, uh, and a lot of stock broking firms will have online software for free. So, um, what's important, obviously, is what you feel comfortable with and uh, what you have access to. Okay, but thanks for your questions, guys. Look like that's all of the questions. Yeah, if there's, um, we can wait another minute if there's anything else. Um, yeah. Hello, Bietka. Hello, Bietka. Nice to, nice to see you participating. Great. Great. I think we'll end it here. Thank you very much for participating and look forward to having you again at our next um, webinar. Thank you very much, Sean. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.